Ever since I got my very first car, when I was 13, a $1,500 1983 Mustang GT, but it was in the early 80s, it was a four-speed instead of a five-speed, I found myself doing anything and everything in my power to learn the ins and the outs of all things automotive. From putting a cold air intake on my 2.4 liter Pontiac Sunfire, what's up, jbody.org, fam, all the way up to putting salvaged supercars back on the road, RIP BTC. Needless to say, I've tried just about everything in the book to personalize and modify vehicles for myself and a bunch of other people, both on and off a budget. And over time, I like to think my experience has given me a better outlook on what is and isn't worth it. A lot of which my opinion has changed on over time. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. This is my list of car mods that I changed my mind about. But before we get into all of that, not the hit Nickelodeon TV production, if you're new here, subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. It helps us get in front of more car enthusiasts just like yourself. If you need anything, wheels, tires, or suspension, make sure to come see the experts over at FibmanIndustries.com. And if you like big, smoky burnouts and want to see some behind the scenes action here at Fibman Industries, go give me a follow on Instagram at SeanB.FI. So let's go ahead and get right into probably one of the most obvious ones here, all right? Cold air intakes, ram air intakes, short ram intakes, I don't care what you call it, they all pretty much do the same thing. And I think we all know that no matter what the manufacturer actually advertises, you're probably not picking up any horsepower just by changing the tube and the filter that leads to your throttle body or your turbo inlet. And that's really the big reason why these things get kind of a lot of hate from a good portion of people. And I will admit, I was one of those guys at one point in my life. I thought I was the expert and thought, why in the same hell would you change it if you don't even get any benefits? What a waste of money, right? Well, I thought, wrong. There are so many more benefits to a solid piped open element induction system than I realized. While it may not actually increase performance and technically could actually filter out less contaminants, there are so many more benefits to a solid piped open element induction system than I actually realized. While it may not actually increase performance and technically could actually filter out less contaminants, the way a cold air intake can clean up an engine bay is pretty impressive for a really low dollar amount. Case in point, my 2003 Mustang GT Centennial Edition with just 93,000 pampered miles, which is for sale. So slide in the DMs if you're looking for a nice limited production Mustang. Anyway, here's a photo of a stock engine bay and here's a photo of one with a $95 cold air intake. Look at that difference. It looks so much less cluttered. It's easier to clean the engine bay. It's easier to work on the car as a whole. And even if you feel nothing on the butt dyno, it makes cool noises and overall enhances your experience. If you're hating on intakes like I used to, I'd urge you to give it a shot. Spacers and adapters are another huge one here, you know? Everyone and their mother read about a guy whose friend saw on a forum once that all their lugs broke off and sent the wheel through the fender. And there are plenty of legitimate horror stories with spacers and adapters, and these stories always end up being a user error. You didn't get longer lug bolts or studs, or they weren't torqued down properly, or the, the surface was corroded so the spacer didn't seat properly, or the adapter wasn't hub-centric. And it honestly took me until working here to see these misconceptions behind the stories and see them in action on some really extreme cases that held up with no signs of issue. Two years ago, I'd tell you to just buy a different set of wheels with the correct offset to dial in your desired fitment, or get a wheel you don't like as much because the one you've been dreaming about doesn't come drilled for your application. But after seeing the countless successful use of spacers and adapters, I really understand the appeal. Especially when you run into things like ordering the perfect spec wheel for your vehicle to just barely clear your factory calipers, but it turns out at some point in the vehicle's life, someone put some slightly larger A6 calipers on your B5S4 and you need a three millimeter spacer to clear. What a lifesaver. Wow. And while we're on the subject of wheels, my biggest lesson of 2021 is that ceramic coating your wheels is one of the best investments you can make when it comes to protecting your wheels. I'm not gonna lie, when I first learned about ceramic coatings and whatnot, I thought it was way too expensive for what I thought was a glorified wax. What are the long-term effects of this coating? And there's no way it can actually last for years. And how easy is it to make a mistake while installing it? Well, it turns out there really are no long lasting side effects and it does in fact last for years, especially if you follow the coating maintenance regimens. But what really turned my mind around on this one is when I actually went to wash a set of ceramic coated wheels. 90% of the unsightliness on the surface of the wheel quite literally washed off with just water out of the hose. And what I did need a washment for just simply ripped white off with zero effort. It makes such short work of cleaning potentially one of the hardest cleaning portions of your car. The next one's gonna be liquid wraps. Liquid wraps have probably one of the worst stigmas in the game right now, but the tech and the quality behind liquid wraps has come full circle. I think the fact that it was so accessible, it had everyone and everyone running down to Walmart and using aerosol cans of plastic dip to change the color of the car or just paint the trim some big, stupid, dumb, bright color. 
You even had people buying dip your cart kits but still refuse to properly prep, not follow guidelines and rush everything, and then spray in a non-controlled environment leading to a less than stellar outcome. And this gave the whole liquid wrap scene a really, really bad stigma when in reality, so long as that's done correctly, it's really hard to tell the difference between a properly applied liquid wrap and a vinyl wrap or even paint. Once you actually see how well a liquid wrap can be applied, it will change your whole perspective, especially if you're the kind of person who will be changing up the theme and the color of your vehicle every single year. P. The next one is probably going to be the most controversial and the most exciting all at the same time. And I'm, of course, talking about underglow. Listen, underglow is coming back fast and it's not like it used to be. 99.9999999% of underglow these days is super, super easy to install RGB LED strips. It's super stealthy and it's easy to hide. It's way more reliable than the old neon tubes we used to use. And with the availability of 16 million different colors and pattern choices, you can change up the look and the vibe of your underglow on the fly. And the best part is, it's so freaking cheap. We actually carry black label lighting underglow kits for just $160. That's cheap enough for it to be a complete gag if you wanted it to. I used to think underglow was a weird ricer flex, but I totally get it now. It's such a cheap, fun, and easy way to customize your vehicle, grab attention, just get a laugh, or even be used as a utility in low light situations. The best part is no one even has to know that you have it if you're not using it. It's quite literally a win-win. This next one is absolutely crucial. Tires, tires, tires. Now, I love me an affordable tire that I can beat the absolute crap out of and not feel any remorse for destroying it on purpose. But good golly, Miss Molly, are premium tires the absolute jam. If you have a real sports car and want to extract actual performance out of it, I cannot say enough good things about high-end performance tires. I'm talking about things like your Pirelli P0s, your Michelin Pilot Sports, your Toyo Proxies, your Yokohama Advans, you get the point. These are tires that don't just perform, but they also last, and they typically provide a quiet ride all at the same time. And it's heavenly in a car that you want to drive and thrash on. Sure, it's easy to justify a tire that has similar on-paper stats for half the cost. I do it all the time. But if you want an actually perfect tire, a premium summer tire is the way to friggin' go. But that hasn't always been the case for me. I used to scoff at people who would buy these super expensive tires like it was just a flex on your budget-oriented builds, even though they never actually use them for anything. But after experiencing what a premium tire can do on the track and how tame it is, and how little you have to sacrifice on the street when you're not trying to squeeze every last drop of grip out of them, it's nothing short of amazing. Ethanol fuel is another big one for me. Back when it first started coming to gas stations in my local area, I thought it was the dumbest thing. Why would anybody want to put this dirty, corrosive, cheap corn oil gasoline in their vehicle and then get worse fuel economy? Pass. And the more I started reading up on it, the more I felt cheated and lied to by all of my peers. Because here was a fuel that I could buy at the pump, that would be the cheapest fuel at the pump, be 85% renewable, it's going to produce less harmful emissions than regular gasoline, and it's going to have a race-like resistance to detonation with an octane rating that ranges anywhere from 100 to 108, and sometimes even more with your race-oriented ethanol. Now, sure, you probably shouldn't let the stuff sit around for a long time. Run it in small engines, or put it in anything older than, say, like your late 90s vehicles with without fuel system changes beyond the pumps and the injectors. But God damn, if this isn't good to pick up 20% in power just by switching fuels on a boosted application, it's wild. My 2004 PT Cruiser GT that I had went from a fun bolt-on SRT4 powered car to a high 12 second quarter mile beast just by switching out the fuel pump injectors and then running an E85 tune. If you're still on the fence or think bad things about ethanol fuels, I highly encourage you to do a little more research. And lastly, I wanna to touch on lightweight wheels. Rotary formed, rotary forged, spin formed, whatever you wanna call it, formed wheels, more specifically. You see, just a few years ago, lightweight options were pretty much RPF ones and then fully forged wheels. This really kinda of either left you with choosing a wheel that was on everyone else's car or spending a few thousand dollars on a set of wheels, which outside of sports and exotic cars, I never really saw wheel weight as so important that it was worth spending multiple thousands of dollars on them. But with rotary forming manufacturing processes becoming more and more affordable, you can start getting into lightweight wheels that both look good and make a difference in how your car puts power to the ground and how efficient your suspension works. Yeah. So with lightweight wheels being a lot more affordable, saving five pounds per wheel for a few hundred extra dollars over a fully cast wheel with similar aesthetic is much, much more 
it gets you a lot more value for your money. I mean, hell, Dakota went and put some Artists of Art Form Titans on his 10th Gen Civic Si and it dropped 32 pounds. 32 pounds! With an 18 by nine and a half. Technically, that's like picking up 3.2 horsepower. That's more than your cold air intake is gonna get you just by dropping some weight, let alone the fact that it's legitimately going to put power to the ground better because the less rotating mass equals less parasitic drivetrain loss. And your suspension is gonna move much more freely and be a lot more efficient as a whole for $1,080. I don't know how they do it, but boy, has it changed my perspective and outlook on wheel weight for all cars, not just sports cars. But what are some car mods? Oh my God. But what are some car mods you guys? But what are some car mods you guys? <laughs> But what are some car mods you guys changed your mind about? For better or for worse, let me know. I'm Sean, and if you guys wanna see more videos just like this one, make sure to slap that thumbs up button and leave your ideas down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss any of the crazy builds coming your way. And of course, you know where to go for all things wheels, tires, and suspension. Peace. What if they don't know? What if they don't know when I just left them hanging?